This is a Raspberry Pi Pico. And this is a display pack. It's running an animation. In my earlier video, I showed how I was able to port a vector based game to the display pack. In this video, I'm going to show how you can display bitmap images and even simple animations using the Pico and the display pack. There are some significant challenges due to the amount of memory, the amount of flash memory, and the processing capability of the Pico. But I'll show how I was able to use a computer to pre process the image files to make them easier to use on a Pico. Let's start by looking at the way the display pack works and how the data is sent to the screen. The libraries for the display pack require a byte array for storing the image, which is then sent to the screen through the update method. This is shown in the code here. The byte array has two bytes per pixel, but we normally deal with color using three bytes per pixel, with a byte for each of the elements red, green and blue, RGB. To fit this into two bytes, the code drops the least significant bits from each of the colors, using five bits for red, six bits for green and five bits for blue. This is then merged into two bytes, which occupy two positions in the byte array. I've created a function to convert from an RGB value to an RGB 565 two byte list. This uses bit masks and bitwise shift operations to create the bytes shown previously. For a practical example, I'll show you how to display a full screen image on the Pico display. This could be used to show a static image, a background image prior to drawing a sprite, or by showing multiple files, it can show a simple animation. As mentioned, the Pico does not have either the processing power or the memory to be able to handle the data conversion in real time. The files will instead be processed into a raw format that the Pico can read. This is done on a PC prior to uploading the files to the Pico. Prior to converting an image for a format for the Pico, it needs to be at the correct resolution. This means it needs to be exactly 240 by 135 pixels in size. This is best achieved with a graphics program that can apply an appropriate scaling algorithm to get the best results. I recommend using GIMP, which is free open source graphics editor. But you could use other applications or a command line program such as ImageMagick. So here I'll edit a file to fit those requirements. First select an area use the correct aspect ratio then crop the image to the selection and then resize the image This can then be exported as a PNG file. The next stage is to convert that to the RGB 565 format that I mentioned previously. This is done using a Python program running on a PC or it could be a Raspberry Pi. The code is based around the Python PNG module. It uses a reader instance to read the RGBA value of each of the pixels. This is RGB, red, green, blue, as covered previously, but also the alpha value. The alpha value is ignored for this particular program. The data is then converted to the RGB 565 format and then written to a new file with the raw extension. There are some print statements in the code file which I've commented out, but they can help you to understand the data that is read from the PNG file. This has been used against this image file to create a raw binary file that could be used on the Pico. The output file from the convert command is a binary raw file. The file needs to be transferred to the Pico. The easiest way I found of doing this is to use the rshell command. Run the command as rshell. If it fails to connect, you may need to close Thony and restart the Pico by disconnecting and reconnecting the USB connection. When connected, you can navigate around your local computer using the cd command and access the pico using the slash pyboard directory. So cd to the pico sprites directory, then use cp which is a copy command, the image file name and then to slash pyboard.
The next program runs on the Pico. It reads in the file and then writes it directly to the display buffer byte array. Then update is called to update the screen. There's not much in the way of error checking for this program, but it does illustrate the basic steps required in reading in the file and sending it to the display. To create a simple animation, then you can display static images one after another. This is something I've already done with my RGB matrix display, which I powered using a Raspberry Pi. But the increased resolution of the display and the performance on the Pico makes this a little challenging. Using the full resolution and loading each image one at a time with no delay, then it took 90 seconds to display a 17 frame animation. So that took about five seconds for each image. So first, you need to start with a series of static images. Typically, this needs to be around 20 images or less. These can be created manually using a drawing package, presentation software, or photos. Alternatively, they can be created using an animation package such as Blender. I created my images using Blender 2D animation mode. I've already created a video on that if you're interested. I had to change the render size down to 240 by 135 pixels and I exported the video based on every 10th frame, giving a total of 17 frames, instead of 170 if I'd rendered every frame. This gave me 17 PNG images, which was a reasonable amount to upload. As with the static image previously, the images were converted to raw files to be used with a Pico. I created an update conversion program, which converted all 17 files into raw, individual raw files. This code is available on my website. The files were then uploaded to an animation directory on the Pico and an updated Python file created to show each of the images in turn. It uses the same code, but just loops around the different image files, which are numbered sequentially. There are more details on my website, including the source code. I also hope to show how you can use bitmap sprites in a future video. I hope this has been useful. If so, please like, share and subscribe, and look forward to seeing you on a future video.